what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're back with another preview and predictions for money in the bank uh it is this weekend i'm looking forward to it and i'm actually really looking forward to this preview pre and predictions because i have a lot that i want to talk about but um let's get right into it man it's i think this is going to be a very good show uh it's going to be overseas in the uk so shout out to the uk subscribers i know you guys are going to kill it when it comes to the intensity and i'm waiting for it so this should be a good one so let's start it off um the intercontinental championship match um gunther versus matt riddle gunther he's just had this amazing streak of putting on very good matches if you guys remember his intercontinental uh, championship match versus uh, mustafa ali which obviously a lot of people didn't expect you know mustafa to win but it was just the simple fact that that match was really good surprisingly better than i i think a lot of us expected it was an enjoyable match and they gunther made mustafa look like he could actually win it he, he really put in the work to make it seem like he could actually pull off the upset here gunther matt riddle they've been having their issues back and forth matt riddle has been attacking his cronies and stuff like that and gunther has just been really pretty much letting it be known you're not even in my league type uh energy and vibe he's been given so i think they're gonna have a fantastic match it could be match of the night potentially anything that gunther's involved can definitely be match of the night so i'm looking forward to this but if i had to choose gunther will still retain matt riddle is not the person to take down gunther yet they they need to keep building him up because right now gunther is arguably becoming the best intercontinental champion we have ever seen in quite some time and i'm loving it so keep his title reign going he does not need to drop the title not yet the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match, Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler versus Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan. Um, I believe they uh, unified the Women's NXT Tag Team Championships as well. Um, honestly, honestly, they're probably going to keep Ronda and Shayna as champs and retain. I'm not really too interested in this match, to be quite honest with you. Uh, uh, it could be decent. You know, it could be a decent showing, but I just think since they just, Ronda and Shayna just won the tag team, well, unified tag team championships, it doesn't make sense for them to lose it right back, like within like a week or two weeks. So honestly, I think Ronda and Shayna is going to retain and they're going to start probably uh, doing some things. Uh, on NXT to kind of get that NXT buzz going or keep that going. I've been seeing a lot of them, uh, some of the main roster individuals have been going down to NXT to kind of lift them up as well, rating wise and just experience wise. So I think having Ronda and Shayna still hold the titles would be a good look in the sense of getting more eyes on maybe the nxt division as well um so i honestly think that's what's gonna happen ronda Shayna retaining don't really too much care for this match but uh hopefully it's a solid one cody versus dominic now i have to talk about this one this one i think is gonna be real fun dominic's gonna get booed to oblivion this is gonna be a fun match honestly and I know some of y'all don't want it to happen, but it it they the the way they're planting the seeds, it's probably gonna happen. It's gonna be a situation where Dominic's dead to rights. It's over for Dominic. Dominic is about to lose, and Brock Lesnar is going to attack him. Probably come from the crowd or something like that. Brock Lesnar is going to attack Cody and screw him out of the match. Dominic is going to capitalize and win the match. That is another way to one, get some mega nuclear heel heat on Dominic. He already has great heel heat. Now he beats the top baby face because of interference. He's a chicken shit heel. It makes sense. Have Dominic win because of Brock Lesnar. And obviously that's another way to start the feud back up to finally end it at SummerSlam. Cody did say, you can find me anywhere. I'll be anywhere you want. You want the smoke? I'll be I'll be there. Well, he's in the middle of a match. Brock wants to smoke. It's going to cost them the match, which will ultimately set up their final and last match at SummerSlam 
this year to end it since they're both tied 1-1 in victories. That's what's probably going to happen. Honestly, it gives Dominic that that extra heel heat. Like, hey, I beat... He's not going to say he beat uh, Cody with help. He's going to say, I beat Cody Rhodes by myself. It's going to bring up that extra heel heat uh, for him going into SummerSlam. He's going to be one of the biggest heels in the company because I can tell you now that crowd is going to boo him to oblivion, and I can't wait. So ultimately, Dominic will win with the interference of Brock Lesnar there. Now, this one, they have really piqued my interest even more. The World Heavyweight Championship match, Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor. The reason why my interest has gotten peaked because of what they've done with Finn Balor. Finn Balor, for quite some time, even though he, quote unquote, I guess was the leader of Judgment Day, he hasn't really felt like it. Finn Balor has kind of been more of an afterthought. He hasn't really been someone that we should take heed in and, and be fearful of or be concerned about in a sense of, you know, taking people down. The last time Finn Balor had that intensity is when he went back to NXT and he had attacked uh, Johnny Gargano. That's the last time I felt like, okay, this is the Finn Balor that's here to take care of business. That first little promo interaction, crowd wouldn't let Finn Balor get a word in. Pretty much Seth cooked him, called him a little bitch. If this version of you show up, you ain't gonna do nothing. You walking around like a little bitch. I loved it because after that, Finn Balor has been going rogue and I appreciate he's been attacking him left and right and brutally giving him the beats to let him know I'm done playing with you. That little promo uh, package they had for Finn Balor talking about what happened to him when he lost the Universal Championship, um, talking about how his life had changed, talking about how Seth came out that night after laughing after he lost his Universal Championship and how it bothered him. I love that they brought that back. I love this intensity, this I'm going to destroy you for what you did. This is great. It's fantastic. It made me buy in into this match that much more because without all of that, it's like, yeah, you kind of know Seth is going to win. But with this added extra intensity, it makes you care about Finn Balor's side of things and maybe even give you that impression that maybe he can do it. Now, of course, obviously, Finn Balor is not going to win. I do think Seth Rollins is going to retain. Still not his time to drop it yet. But they can make a very good match out of it. A very, very, very good match out of it. It comes off believable. comes off as something that Finn maybe could do it. And I'm interested... Hopefully, this could be a... I, I do think it's going to be a very good match. I'm not going to say hopefully. I think they, they work well together in the ring. I think this should be a very good match. I'm looking forward to it. But Seth Rollins will retain. All right. The women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Zelina Vega, Becky Lynch, Bailey, EO Sky, Trish Stratus, Zoe Starks. Ah, this is an every, very interesting one. Very interesting one. Um, For me, who I would want to win... Obviously, Bailey, uh, EO Sky, that storyline there. I actually would want EO to win. I definitely would want EO to win. The reason why I want EO to win, because you can create another storyline. Because there's already a story with Bailey and EO. Like, you know, EO feels like Bailey's kind of holding her back. So, say, for example, there's a situation where EO has a chance to maybe help out Bailey or whatever and she wins it or whatever the situation may be or Bailey feels some type of way that EO didn't help her win it I think that's a good story within a story and it doesn't cause I don't think there needs to be immediate cash in because Bailey and EO can start having a feud now and I think that's what we need in a sense because with Zelina potentially winning they can be like an immediate cash in which I wouldn't want them to do and Becky's probably not going to win it because of Trish and Zoe Starks. So the only thing that makes sense storyline-wise that can have people get invested into and build up EO is start having Bailey and EO feud. You can have a situation where Bailey attacks her because she feels like she should have been money in the bank winner and EO didn't help her. And then you can have them feud a little bit. And at some point, 
at some point you can have EO potentially cash in maybe on Asuka or something like that. You know, maybe them, I would love for them to have a match or whatever. Or maybe it's a situation of, you know, maybe she cashes in on Rhea. Who knows? There's there's plenty of possibilities they can do with this. But I do think building up a few with the money in the bank winners, especially on the women's side, to kind of give fans time to buy into EO being the money in the bank winner, I think that will work. And we don't have to worry about immediate cash in and they can build off of that. So honestly, I'm going with EO feuding with Bailey, EO winning, feuding with Bailey, and then we decide, we figure out whether she goes for Oscar, whether she goes for Rhea, whatever happens, I'm all for it, but I'm for EO winning in the Money in the Bank ladder match. All right, for the men's, Ricochet, Shinsuke, Santo Escobar, Butch, LA Knight, Damian Priest, and Logan Paul. Well, y'all know who I want to win, LA Knight. It, it just it it's his time he's super over there's no reason why he shouldn't win the money in the bank ladder match the guy is ridiculously over but there have been rumors circulating that it's not going to be la night it's going to be logan paul the guy that didn't even have to qualify to get into the match and that's going to be my concern and issue because I like Logan Paul and what he's done in WWE so far. But when he's part-time, so he's not going to be there all the time. So it doesn't make sense to put the money in the bank on him. On him. I don't want to hear, oh, it's going to get more eyes because he's walking around with the briefcase everywhere in YouTube videos. No, 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 no. Logan Paul is a good addition, but he should not win the match. It should be guys that are established, guys that can use it. Hell, if you don't give it to LA now, you can give it to Damian Priest. He could use that. Like, no, it's simple. LA Knight or Bus, the dude is the most over guy, especially, he's probably almost the most over guy in WWE. Outside of Cody, he gets that type of reaction wherever he goes. There's no reason why you don't give LA Knight the win. If Imagine LA Knight climbs and he pulls down a briefcase, the crowd goes crazy. And then have him just run with the belt. Have him talk his trash. Have him just really let the let that star side of him come out so people can really appreciate him even more because now he's missed the money in the bank. Come on, bro. Come on, man. It's simple. My fear is Logan Paul will win, but the person I want to win truly is LA Knight. That's it. That's it. LA Knight or bus. LA Knight or Damian Priest. With, Damian Priest is a 2A, like a 2B situation. LA Knight for sure. LA Knight, man. <laughs> I hope they do it, bro. Please, please do it. And last but not least, the Bloodline Civil War, the Usos versus Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa. And oh boy, this is going to be a fun one. Um, If I had to really, really choose who I would have win here, I'm going with the Usos. And I'm going with... And when you guys point this out uh, on one of my streams, I thought this was very good. I've been keeping this in the back of my mind. I go with the Usos winning the match, but instead of Solo taking the pin, Roman gets pinned. And I have Jey Uso pin him. Yep, I said it. Jey Uso pins Roman Reigns in this tag team match. The titles are not on the line, but... Roman hasn't been pinned since Finn Balor. Not Finn Balor, since uh, Baron Corbin in like 2019. It only makes sense. Jay Uso pins Roman Reigns. First, the crowd's going to go crazy. That hasn't been done in so long. Have him be pinned. Have Jay be pinned because they've been going with the storyline like oh jay we're gonna make you the next tribal chief that's what we're gonna do have jay pin the current tribal chief that's not what they wanted but that's the story that they started to tell i'm all for it because then we can set up the match jay versus roman at SummerSlam. we can set that match up we can set that match up right there the match is set. 
Because now Jay can say, I pinned you. You haven't been pinned since 2019. I pinned you. Remember, you you guys wanted me to be the next tribal chief. Well, I beat the tribal chief and I pinned him. I pinned the tribal chief. I want a title chop opportunity. Give me a title opportunity. I pinned you. It writes itself. It writes itself. That pop is going to be crazy. I don't, Roman and Solo don't need to win because you, where do you go from there? So, to create some type of, um, to continue the storyline, you have the Usos win, but you don't have them pinned Solo. No, Solo's already been pinned in a tag team situation. You have them pinned Roman because now you can extend it to SummerSlam, J versus Roman. Main event. And it's going to, people are going to buy into it even more because Jay pinned Roman. Now people want to see him. If he can really win the big championship, if he can dethrone Roman, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. These are those situations where Roman should get pinned right here. There's no other possibility that makes sense to continue the story that's going to have fans interested. The, Jay pinning Roman is going to be a moment that we all remember in this whole saga as well. We all remember the super kick that Jay finally gave to Roman. We all remember the chair shot that uh, Sammy gave to Roman. And we all remember the super kick that Jimmy gave to Roman. We're all going to remember the moment that Jay Uso pinned Roman Reigns in the middle of the ring to win that money in the bank and what it led to. Let's get it going. So Uso's wins. Oh, the Usos win. Jay pins Roman Reigns. The end. And we set up a match for Roman versus Jay for the uh, WWE uh, Universal Championship, uh, Undisputed Universal Championship. <laughs> of course, he probably won't win at Summer SummerSlam, but it'll still be a good match, and they can tell some more story there. So Usos winning, Jay pinning Roman uh, at Money in the Bank. So comment down below. Let me know. Who do you guys think will win? Who do you guys think will lose? Where do you think the, the storylines are going to go, man? Who's going to win the men's and women's Money in the Bank ladder match? And if you guys are excited for Money in the Bank this week, because I know I am. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys. Shout on the channel, Road to 150K. And I'm still young, speedy YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.